Um, and I didn't even know that we were gonna, you know, be doing this interview. It's Ikaru, your tarotist. How are you doing? I am super excited for today's interview. I'm talking to a really good friend of mine, Jess Be Inspired. She is a Reiki master, she is an animal channeler, also a deck creator. She is absolutely amazing. She's also a crystal shop and she's a meditation teacher. And she learned from the master himself, David G. So I'm super excited to talk to Jess Be Inspired. I hope you are super excited to listen to this interview. And yeah, let's get to it. Without further ado, here's Jess Be Inspired. Jess, thank you so much for joining me and for agreeing to be a guest on here. I'm super excited to talk to you. You have my consent. <laughs> I had your consent to talk to me. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Um, before we start, I actually have a selfish question uh, or a selfish request. Okay. I want you to talk me through, from your perspective, how we met and how we connected. Oh my gosh. This is a selfish like request. I don't even feel like it's selfish. I'm going to just like, I wonder how this is going to look from the other end. Um, so you want to talk about the journey of when I forced my friendship on you? Is that what you're <laughs> wanting to discuss? That's my joke that I always say to people. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, well, so my experience of how we connected was I was a Reiki practitioner. I don't even know if I was a Reiki master at the time. I can't even remember if I had gone through that, that, um, certification yet, but I was a Reiki practitioner, uh, here at, you know, in Boca at our local Reiki studio, crystal shop, good vibes. And I remember you coming to, I think one of my Reiki circles, I feel like though I maybe had met you before the Reiki circle when you were just shopping for crystals and I just really loved your energy. And I remember talking about you behind your back and <laughs> the owner, um, how much I loved your energy. And she was like, I know he's fantastic. Um, and so you kind of had this like reputation of being really well liked and just super loving. And then you came to and then you met me and you go, never mind. <laughs> and, then I met you and I was like, oh, wait, let me just like, yeah, let me, let me tell you really how it is. Uh, but no. And then what ended up happening from that experience was that I think you came to a Reiki circle and you attended and you just were so awesome. And, you know, it's kind of funny too, because I think that what a lot of people maybe don't know about you in my perspective is I think it takes a second for you to open up you know, um, and that you were definitely more shy. Like your energy was like super loving and very welcoming, but it wasn't like you were like always like talking or necessarily sharing. You were just kind of really, I think there to receive. Um, and then I came and took your tarot course and it was awesome. And I just remember laughing so hard, like uncontrollably when you were talking about the tower card and, uh, and I just said, wow, like I, I'm, I learned so much. And then we just became friends and we, you know, I think just started to naturally evolve where we both got to learn from one another and we got to both receive from one another and what we were creating for ourselves that now we're fully in, like, it's kind of, I get emotional thinking about that because it's like, Iker, like think of where we started and like where we are now. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Um, yeah, we don't think we don't think about that enough of how far we've come, because then it's at least from my perspective, I always tend to think of like how far I still have to go and mm. what I have to get there and things like that. And it's a good thing to think of because it keeps you creative and it keeps you um, future thinking. But at the same time, you're future tripping. Right. And then we forget how right. far we've come. So, you know, what's really interesting, too, is that I feel like just to kind of go off topic for a second, which I feel like that's probably going to be <laughs> what happens with you and I throughout this, uh, yep. but, um, is that I think that we don't celebrate our successes enough. Mm. I think that we tend to just really focus on that. We're not where we thought 
we were going to be or we're not where we had you know set perhaps a date in our mind of when we were going to achieve this thing um and i think that it's something that i just notice even within my clients and myself of just not celebrating enough of how far you've come yeah 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 i agree with that um what does what does it mean to you to be an entrepreneur well, it's so funny because it's like, I want to answer that question, but I kind of also want to like ask you a question, which I know that this is not my podcast and I'm not trying to. <laughs> I knew you were going to do this. I, listen, 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 listen. No, no, no. Interview no. So, me as I interview you. I, no, I really, I promise you, I, I won't. I will try to refrain from doing this. And I want to answer this question, but I kind of want to just hear from your perspective when, how we first met. I just, I'm curious. I'm just curious. <laughs> no, you, um, I think from where we first met, there was somehow a mutual trust Mm -hmm. Um, that to me was unspoken because you're right. I did not come to talk. I did not come to express myself when, especially coming to the Reiki circles. I came to yours and I kind of, I was kind of coming like three or four times a week, sometimes Yeah. different Reiki masters. And I didn't come to talk. I just wanted to receive. I just wanted to be by myself, but also with actually with myself, but not by myself. And my joke, you know, you kind of touched in the beginning how you force your friendship upon me. And I joke about that um, because you're right. I, I, I can be very shy. I tend to have a, a little time opening up. But you were, you were always came and hugged me. You always came and welcomed me. Mm-hmm. You actually welcomed everyone into your circle. Mm-hmm. But that felt very special to me. And I was just like, okay, you're hugging me. I'm never going to turn down a hug, right? Uh, as you said, I'm, I'm loving. I can be a bit... You're the best t- hugger, too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I know I can be a bit serious, especially in my face. Um, I think I have resting bitch face. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, if anyone strikes up a conversation with me, I'm never going to turn it down. I'm going to see where it goes. And I want to hear people's stories. And as you were hugging me, I was, and as you kept hugging me as the, as the weeks went on, as I kept coming back, I was like, oh, this is nice. I feel welcome here and I feel good. And you, which you still do, you have a tendency of putting people on the spot. But in a way, it's a good thing. I'm doing it more now. (laughs) (laughs) Perhaps. But it was a good thing because I I needed to be put on the spot. And you kind of asking me, you know, when I first started reading cards, you were the one being like, Ikaru, what do you think? What do you have to say? Or can you teach us more? And I'm like, uh, you know in that moment I was like uh okay and then I would say something but those questions what I, what I think you didn't know what you were doing which was unintentional but what you were doing is actually helping me step into my power and my knowledge mm. and every time I would quote unquote be forced to say something which of course I could have said no and you would have moved on yeah you know but it's just my my inside joke for you to be forced to it and then the people would respond positively and they'd be like, oh, that makes sense. And I was like, oh, wait, maybe I am talking about something that, that mm-hmm. is touching people, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe my voice deserves to be heard and I have something to say. And then again, going back to the mutual trust, because then you invite you, we would hang out outside, like after the circle was done, is usually when the store closed and we would go maybe grab some dinner or grab a bite or just kind of talk by our cars for like an mm-hmm. hour after or something. Uh, and then you started inviting me to your place. And I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is fun. This is kind of a friendship building up. So that was it from my perspective. <laughs> I am so, I just, I was just so curious because um, I think there's, you know, there's so many different styles of teaching and something that I really learned and I'm still discovering for myself that I ask in this journey of, you know, sharing, teaching Reiki and all these different, you know, spiritual healings and modalities and crystals, what type of teacher do I want to be? And I think that there is teachers that kind of throw you in the water and it's like sink or swim. Um, And I think that I try to be as gentle where let's throw you in the water, but if you don't want to be thrown, that's okay too. Uh, And, and, but I feel like it's, it's, it's about, I think that the one skill set I will pride myself on this that I've always recognized is that I see the potential in others sometimes when they don't even necessarily see it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that that has served me as a teacher 
in the sense of really trying to encourage and inspire my Reiki students to just step out there and really own their light. And I think a lot of my even intuitive readings are, you know, were those messages, those downloads of how somebody can fully step in to what it is that they want to create. And then I think that like in relationships, like personally, like dating, that can also be not so great. Right. So I think that there is just ways in which we can operate in the world that we have these innate gifts and skill sets that can be really utilized to empower others or disempower ourselves. And I know that you were asking me earlier as like what it's like to be an entrepreneur. And I literally had this thought today. Um, and I didn't even know that we were going to, you know, be doing this interview. It was kind of like divinely, like, just like last minute. And I remember getting into my car and going to, you know, where I do in-person sessions here locally and saying to myself, like being an entrepreneur is not for everybody. And I think that I didn't even know what it meant until I fully stepped in because I had been dancing in two places where I had my foot in either side of the line in the middle where I was in the corporate world, I could create my own schedule. And then I had my foot in the other world of just doing this work and where I ultimately wanted to be. And it took such, um, such tenacity to just lift up that one leg and bring it over. But I think that what happens in the spiritual world is we talk about so much of like, go and do this thing and you can do it and be out there. But we don't talk enough about what happens when you're actually doing it. And I think that that's like, as being an entrepreneur, I've learned so much about myself and what I'm truly capable of in ways that I had no idea. So tell me more about what happens once you are in the entrepreneurial path. Yeah, I'll give you a really like, and it's so interesting because I'll do this in timelines. Basically, I remember that I, I, I had for a long time said to myself, I'm going like for like about a year, I was like, I'm going to quit my job in January, 2021. Um, I, 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 that was the, the goal for me. I really wanted to make sure that I could pay my bills. I didn't want to just jump into being an entrepreneur and not be able to take care of myself, at least just the basics. Um, and so that's where I think that's number one, that's really important is to not just feel like you have to blow up your life in order to then go and do the thing. If it works better for you to make sure that you're somehow secure, I would advise that. I don't think that that's for everybody, but that was the road that I took. And what happened is, is I kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed by the universe, my higher source, God, spirit, whatever you want to call it. Um, because things kept unfolding in my corporate job that just didn't align for me to be there anymore. And so literally, I remember talking to another healer that we both know from working um, at, you know, our, our local place here. And it's almost like they said to me, like, it's like having a baby, like you're never going to like, there's never going to be a right time to just like quit your job. Right. <laughs> and good. yeah. And I just like though, so I had in my mind January and I just woke up on a day in November and I just called my boss and I said, I'm, I'm putting in my two weeks. Oh, wow. And it was like, it was almost something came over me that I can't even explain it, but I just knew it was time for me to go. And so in that moment, I was like, oh my God, I can do this. You know, you, you, you can make enough to, 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 to pay your rent at least. And, 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 and you got this. And like, it was like this exciting, you know, moment. And then about a month after doing it, I was like, what did I just do? I literally was like, I just ruined my life. I ruined my mother's life. I ruined uh, Chris's life. I ruined Pepe's life. Like I literally thought that I had just ruined everybody's life because I left this, this career that I had been working up to, you know, for, you know, for, and, and been in for 10 years and I just left. And the people that had my job, they don't leave. Like these are like the career that I had is very like lucrative. It's really hard to get to where I was at that. Like people were like, what, what are you going to do? Like people were so confused. And 
that started to settle in about a month in because I was like, oh my God, like I I went into this like really panic mode of like, how am I going to make money? How am I going to afford my rent? How, what happens if something happens to Pepe? Like I literally just was in this like month afterward of like complete panic. Um, and, and I think that that's where people don't talk about this, you know, um, as often as they should, they just talk about take the leap of faith. Yeah. Um, And then, and then what happened is, is I remember I got on a phone call with a dear friend of mine and she talked me off the ledge and she said to me, you just left your corporate job to pursue your dream. And is this the energy that you really want to bring to your dream? Mm, interesting question. And I said, Oh my God, no. She's like, you were super stressed and now you want to bring stress to your purpose. And it really just put me into a much better place. And she said this to me, and I'm going to create this one day. She said, you are your own workshop, write down everything, everything that you're feeling, the fears of this, this is a workshop in the making. And you get to be the leader of it. And so that's kind of the assignment that I went on in my mind. And then that was like, so that was like, you know, November, I left about a month after. So it was like December to January. And then, I mean, I literally like think about this and I'm going to get emotional. Um, And then in January around my birthday, my dad gets sick and things then were even more concerning because I thought to myself, Oh my God, you know, like I, like he, he was my mentor in becoming an entrepreneur because he had his own successful law firm for like 40 years. So he was always the person that when I was like, I ruined my life, I literally would say this to him. I ruined my life. I don't know what I did. He would say to me, what are you talking about? Like, no, like, he's like, you did not ruin your life. You are going to be so successful. Like he was the voice always in my head. And so I didn't have that voice because he was not well. And I had to create that for myself. And then he ended up getting a, an intense diagnosis and he had two weeks and he passed in March, you know, but it was like February that we found out that diagnosis. So then here I was a month in, you know, freaking out, scarcity mindset, kind of starting to then shift my perspective. I kept saying, you are your own workshop. So then February, you know, January, February, starting to deal with this, like, you know, like sickness that my family was going through, but then really solidifying it in, in, in February. And then March, he transitioned, he passed on, he ascended. And I was done. Like when he, like I, you know, had been through grief and loss with my sister. Um, but this was so different because I didn't have the stability like that I was used to just knowing that like, well, you know, I just went through this, but I'm going to still be able to be okay and survive. And maybe I'll take a vacation. Maybe I'll do something for myself. It's like when you are an entrepreneur, if you're not getting up every day and doing something, Mm -hmm. you're not creating income for yourself. That was like what I had to learn. Like, and so for me, I couldn't get up. I couldn't move. I mean, you know, Pepe is barking on the truth in the background. I mean, I literally... I couldn't, I couldn't move. I couldn't get up, but I didn't have a choice because I had to keep going in order to just survive and pay my bills. I had a friend of mine that said, you know, listen, just start and it will snowball. And so I just started and I really leaned into community and I really leaned into Reiki and meditation. And then I was reminded that all the things I do in my business are my medicine. Those are the things that help me to survive and to thrive in my most challenging times. So going back to this long-winded answer to this question, when you are an entrepreneur that is so deeply connected to the work that you are doing, it will happen. It will unfold. It will reveal itself. And it will be the thing that yes, maybe exhaust you, that yes, maybe occupies so much of your time, but it will also be the thing that keeps you going when you don't see the light. Wow. Yeah, there's this idea of taking the leap, right? And we, 
I think as I think as us growing up, we hear like, oh, if you work hard, you're going to be successful, right? And then you go to college and you get a degree, and then you keep, you find the job, work hard as you did on in your career, and you got to a place that a lot of people envy, and a lot of people want to be at. <clears throat> and then you looked around and said, no, that's not for me. I want to take it back a little bit, and I want to ask you, what did you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> I always wanted to be an actress. Mm. So I grew up like when I was like, uh, like, you know, three years old. And that's what I think is so funny because I've talked about this recently is that like I had made the decision at three years old that I was going to be on stage and I was going to be performing. And literally I ran with that dream and that vision all the way up until I was about 20. Well, I would say 25, 26. Yeah. Um, And that was like literally where I would make every decision. I went to school and college for theater. I moved out to California to act. Um, And, you know, it's so funny because it's like, I have to say that, like, I'm so glad that that career did not work out. I would have not been set up for that at all. Really? No. Oh, my God. It is. It's really sad. I mean, just like the way that you're, you know stereotyped of like looks and this and that and 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 it's 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 constantly this experience where you're putting yourself out there in this like vulnerable way where you're like becoming this character this thing and you're auditioning Mm -hmm. and you're just having all these people judge you and you have no idea why they say yes and why they say no Mm -hmm. I mean anybody who's an actress or an actor that has made it um kudos to them because it is not, I wasn't designed for it. I wasn't designed for it. I wasn't built for it, but I learned so much about how to just like engage and put myself out there and, and kind of like move throughout, you know, the fear, but that was really what I wanted. And I I think about that because it's like, it's such a great question. And I think it's a question that we ask such young kids, like, what do you want to be when, when we grow up? But do we really even know if that, I don't even know what that means. I know. know? ask kids like what do you want to be when you grow up and it's like you can and like for me I got attached mm-hmm. the thing I wanted to be that I'm so grateful did not work out and I had to work through that when I came back and I felt like a failure or whatever but like I I say that because it's like it puts a lot of pressure on us when we don't even know we're three years old or five years old or six years old and we're asking this question yeah. you know what I mean like it's kind of like how does that set us up for success it doesn't because we have no idea what it's like to be a grown up and to do something and then start right. like, asking these kids that I just want to play, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like for me, I was a kid that I got attached to that and I was like, that's what's going to happen. That's what it's going to be, you know? And I had made this decision and every action that I did followed that choice that I had made at a very young age when I didn't even know, I don't even, you know, n- knew who I was. <laughs> <laughs> What would be some of the similarities that you see in becoming an actress and what you do now? Um, well, it's really funny because like there's like low-key a joke. And like I feel like I've shared this with you before, that like there are sometimes like actors who haven't made it that like end up doing spiritual work. <laughs> Which we've really? talked about this. Have we talked uh, the people that I met when I was in LA? Remember that I was like and I was like showing you their stuff, and I was like, I feel like this is like performance versus just like actually diving into like spiritual work uh yeah. do you know what i'm talking about now mm-hmm. yeah yeah um so i just you know i think that uh so it's just like it's funny because i actually feel like i don't like to talk about the fact that i wanted to be an actress for most for for a lot of it because i feel like i don't want people to ever think i'm acting <laughs> in this spiritual world mm-hmm. uh because i think that this world um Oh God. The difference between this world is like, you're not pretending to be anybody else. If you're really doing the work, you're just doing the work for yourself and you're letting that exude through to other people. So that's the biggest difference for me is like, I'm not trying to be X, Y, and Z. I'm literally just trying to share my vulnerability and to share my truth and my healing and, 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 and just hoping that it resonates. I think that it's definitely been the best training to like put myself out there, but that's where I would say is like, you're not trying to pretend to be anybody else. Yeah, no, you can't. I feel like yeah. this work gets to you at some point where you can c- continue acting, but then you're just, people see right through your bullshit or then you, you're forced to I become mean, yourself. 
Exactly. I mean, and I think that you probably can list even a handful of maybe, you know, spiritual teachers or things or people out there that like are in this world that you can just see through where they're not doing the work or where they're just trying to sell you something. Walk me through what that means to do the work. Oh, I was just talking about this yesterday. <laughs> this is like so divine and like divinely aligned. Um, you know, cause I think that there's healers out there. Like, here's the thing. I don't think I, I, I take this note from you of like, I don't think that we have to necessarily be fully healed in order to do this work. I think you, can you share like, cause you say like, I don't want to butcher how you quote it, but like being the kindergartner. Oh, <laughs> no, because um, I've, t- I've said this to you before, and I heard it from someone else, to be honest with you, but I'm not going to remember exactly who. But to be a fo- to teach fourth grade, you just have to be a fifth or sixth grader. Right. So for us as teachers, whenever I'm down on myself being like, am I enough? Am I really doing enough? Am I even doing this podcast? I get nervous asking questions because I'm asking and I really do want to continue reaching out to these powerhouses of people like you and like other people that I've interviewed already who, and I'm going to interview who I'm intimidated. I'm like, I hope I, I I want to be, I hope I'm smart enough Mm. to ask questions that are real and true and honest and to go back to our part of the work. Mm. So, but I, I, I reminded myself that like, I'm maybe 10 step, like not even 10, let's say two or three steps ahead of the people that maybe are listening or, Maybe not. I, I'm hoping to inspire many, many different people. Right. To be a teacher, you just have to be a little bit more advanced because none of us are ever going to be fully healed to mm-hmm. say, I am now ready. Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing I want to offer you is that like, is I think that you are an example of doing the work and that's why you're going to channel and ask the questions that are going to showcase how others are also doing it. And that's where I think that like, you can see the difference of like, when there's maybe podcasts are like, oh, and they're kind of just like checking all the boxes versus the questions that you're asking, you can tell have this intention of you doing the work. And so wanting to showcase how other people have done that too. So I think that when you're doing the work, it's like this reflection that people can see in themselves. And it's not necessarily what that to say that their journey is you know, that person's journey, but that there's this authentic reflection of understanding. And that's where I think that the inner work can really be seen versus you're speaking, but are you really engaging people to feel supported and held? Because I think when you're doing the inner work, you're learning how to support yourself. I, I love, I actually wrote this down, authentic reflection. I think that'll be the title of this episode because yes. I yeah. that those two words together are just really incredible. And it, you're right. It is this authenticity um, that we have to be truly honest with ourselves, seeing these reflections, right? Or seeing this mirror back to us of quote unquote, doing the work. What does that mean? Right. It's, I think being sensitive enough and authentic enough to see where our relationships are supporting and maybe not supporting and where can we even support ourselves Mm -hmm. as just brought that through. So, you know, and it's really interesting because I learned something of, you know, of, and and the thing is, I love what my teacher says, David G about like, it's not that we're more advanced we're maybe more practice. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I remember that I went out to California this is like a really interesting lesson. Um, I went out to California. I was asked to do a Reiki and crystal healing circle for David G my mentor, no big deal. You know, being at <laughs> Deepak Chopra, you know, for 10 years, who's like, you know, hung out with Oprah, you know, worked for Nike. Like, I'm just saying that like, you know, and so like the introduction that he even had, like, like even made me more nervous for myself. Cause he's like, you know, I really know. Cause I've met so many, you know, Ricky Matt, he's like, and Jess is like the real deal. And I was like, Oh my God. Like I was like, this like, I'm, and then I'm just like thinking about all the people that he's met and all the people that he's like worked with. Right. Like on this, like mass. <laughs> um, and he's like published author for like, Hey house, you know what I mean? Like, you know, he thinks like Dalai Lama in his books, like it's, it's fine. It's whatever. But what I say is that, you know, I remember going out there 
And I was so nervous. And then that even made me almost more nervous because I was like, oh my God, who am I? I'm like, this just be inspired from Delray Beach. And like, I don't even like, and I have like almost 5,000 followers, which is great. I'm so grateful. But like, what I'm saying is like, I'm like, oh my God, he's met Oprah. He's worked with Oprah. Like, you know, like, like <laughs> I just went into all these different things. Oh, yeah. And my Reiki circle and Crystal was great. Like, I, I don't want to like deny it, but I didn't fully enjoy the experience because I put myself already like less than mm -hmm. and my mom my mom was there so my mom was able to like give me real feedback and she's like you were great but you rushed it and it, the reason why is because I was nervous mm -hmm. and I realized that putting pressure or comparing ourselves just in the sense of like you know like oh like this person is so much more experienced whatever it doesn't allow us to show up and just fully embrace where we really truly are and so like, I let that be a lesson to myself because even afterwards I was done and I immediately had to use the restroom because I was so nervous that I had missed even what he said and how fantastic it was. And so I let that be a, 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 like a learning curve of not beating myself up, but saying, I am never going to doubt somebody else's investment in me that even if they're higher, because if, yeah, I'm never going to, to doubt someone else's investment in me because when I did that I still was okay like I don't want to like I was good like I people loved it people came up people connected to me he loved it but I could have even just like done that whole experience feeling less nervous so it would have been the same experience but how I felt internally probably would have been really different and so now I'm like, I'm never going to let, and that that's where like that whole statement of like, get letting the nerves get the best of you that it didn't necessarily get the best of me, but it, it didn't allow me to feel the best while I was doing it. So, you know, and afterwards it was so great because like his feedback was like, or beforehand, he was like, all you would have to do is just show up and smile. And that would be enough. Like just what you do in your energy is enough. And I think that we don't necessarily um, allow ourselves the capacity to really embrace the power of our presence. Yeah. Comparison is a killer of joy. Um, and it sounds like you, you went into, into comparison mode of like, he talked to all these people and who the hell am I? Uh, and then just in some way killed the joy and you weren't present. Mm -hmm. Really embrace his investment in you. I love that. Exactly. I love that, sentence. that was incredible. Have you always been spiritual? Yes. I think that I wasn't necessarily uh, aware that it was, I was being spiritual, mm -hmm. but I think that I've always like really grown up in a really spiritual household where my mom was like, do you feel like going to church? It's Christmas. And I was like, no, she's like, cool, whatever. I grew up <laughs> with crystals. I grew up like always like, like having a meaning to something like, you know, like, like, you know, just my mom, be like, Oh, butterfly, you know, like I've always grown up with like having this context of looking at the world with this curiosity and openness. And I think that that's like, what's so beautiful. Like when you are spiritual is that you are awakened and open to the endless possibilities that are around you and which, how you can connect. So how natural did it feel for you to step into a spiritual entrepreneurship? It actually was surrendering. I remember that I had a couple, like maybe a year or two before my sister was diagnosed. I remember sitting with a friend of mine who knew me out in California. We lived together. Um, and she had shared with me, you know, like, how are you doing? Like, and I was like, I'm in the cosmetic field and I'm like loving it. Like I was in my career. And I was like, however, I was like, I feel like I want to be like, maybe like a spiritual coach or something like just saying it, but not really understanding what that meant. But I had this like urge. And then I never thought about it again. Um, but my, my connection to becoming spiritual was through just getting that diagnosis from my sister, which I've shared in 2015 and just saying to myself, I can't live my life the way that I have been in order to really show up and support her. So I, I needed something to help me to just feel hopeful, positive, calm down feel less anxious. I mean, every single box will just check. And I was like, well, I feel like I don't know what meditation is, but I'm going to just try that. And then I just, you know, YouTubed five minute guided meditations. And I think that's really important for anybody out there that is starting their spiritual journey and is 
wondering about meditation, make it work for you. I think in the past I had put so much pressure. I'm the kind of person that's like, I'm either doing it all or I'm not in at all, you know? (laughs) And so I was like, oh, it has to be like 30 minutes of silence and whatever. And like, look like I'm just, you know, in a seated position and, you know, having my hands a certain way. Um, And I just kind of was in such a desperation of feeling um, not scared that I was just like, I just have to just do whatever I can, even if I have five minutes. And so like, it was actually this like journey that as soon as I started, I was addicted. I couldn't come, I couldn't like not do it, you know? Um, but I made it work for me. I made it work for me. So it was like, that's the thing too, is I, I, and I've said this before is this was such the least forced career that I've ever gotten into. It literally just unfolded. And it's not like, listen, you know how hard I work. It's not like about that, but, um, but like, it was just the thing that like, it really, it didn't start off to be a career. It just started off to be the thing to support myself that then became this burning desire to, to like, I had to do it. And I feel called to just share this quick story is that I remember I was on this journey and then to becoming like, let's say a spiritual entrepreneur and starting to think about that. I remember I got into a really um, heated argument with Chris, uh, my partner at the time. And because he didn't understand why I wanted to do this work. And I literally was hysterically crying and saying, you don't understand. I don't have a choice. I have to do this work because I wanted to invest in this program that I had the money for. Um, but he wasn't supportive and he was really overwhelmed and really confused. And I was like, I, I don't, I, can I remember going back and forth and like rationalizing it? And I was like, there's no rational explanation for this other than if I don't do this, I won't be okay. And I've never felt like that about anything in my life. Wow. Was that the David G program? It was actually the Gabby Bernstein spiritual junkie master course, which was a program to basically teach you how to become a spiritual entrepreneur. Great course. Great course. I've disconnected a lot from her work talking about, you know, what we were sharing earlier, but I'm um, like in the sense of I'm not as connected and tapped in. Uh, but it's definitely a great course for anybody out there who's wanting to connect to like learning how to make this an actual business. Yeah. That's awesome. You kind of already answered my next question, which is because I know your titles. I'm going to throw some titles at you. Um, I know you you to be a Reiki master, meditation teacher, and a crystal shop. Mm-hmm. But I I feel like I've watched your crystal shop um, journey, and mm-hmm. I definitely want to touch on that later. But my question was, which one? I want to be one? a reoccurring guest. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you and I, I could talk to you for like days. So definitely yeah, we're going to, we're going to record our I conversation. Just, you're such an integral part to the crystal shop. Just want to say that. Yeah. Love it you. is fun. We have a lot of fun. Yeah. But you talked about meditation and my question was, which one came first, the Reiki or the meditation? Meditation. Uh, and then walk me through the process of because you already touched on you did those five minute meditations and you became immediately addicted to it. Yeah. You, you needed it. Walk me through how it grew. The meditation practice grew into your Reiki practice now and how the two, like a little ice cream swirl. Yeah. Go together. Yeah. Basically I was in my rate. I was in my meditation practice. Look at this. It's like, there's like no disconnection. So I was in my meditation practice for like, I don't even know at that point was like probably at least a year, a year and a half, maybe in year. Yeah. Year, year and a half. And, um, I kept asking. So like, this is not the point to meditation, but something I have that I was like actively seeking because I really realized how much I wanted to do this work was saying spirit, show me where to go, show me where to go. And my intention was show me where to go to do this work. Like that was like my clear, like thought process that I would say that out loud or silently before I did every meditation. And I just kind of waited. And then after doing that for like, probably like, cause it's like, I started off just like meditating for stress and then it, I got more spiritual and then I did the course. So it was probably like six months. And that's why I was like a year and a half. So like the last six months I was asking that question all the time. And I heard in my meditation practice, go do Reiki, go do Reiki. And I was like, okay. Like I heard it like once so profound, like I can remember it was like an afternoon. Like I was like out on my porch, like go do Reiki. Um, and I was like, okay, spirit. Thank you for answering. I'm going to go do Reiki. 
And it was just so funny because literally like maybe the, it's never funny. It's always like these moments of like, right. Like, so like literally like the week prior I had connected with somebody that I was working within like my corporate job structure uh, that was talking about the place that you and I ended up meeting and how they teach Reiki, Reiki there. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I, um, so I followed up. I was like, hey, listen, I'm hearing in my meditation practice, go do Reiki. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they teach it there. So I went and I just wanted to feel out to make sure that I liked the teacher in the space. I didn't even know what Reiki was. I had no idea what I was into. I, I literally had no idea. Um, and so I did it because I like liked the teacher I connected. And then um, basically I did like level one. And so what happened is, is then what happened, I started meditating. And at the end of every meditation, I would do Reiki. That's like, cause level one is really for yourself. Um, and then I knew I wanted to go into level two, but you have to do like, you know, 21 days of Reiki. So I had to wait, then we did Reiki level two. And it was so interesting because at that time I had already been leading a beach meditation here locally. So I already had people that were showing up that when I learned level two, my Reiki teacher said, um, well, you already have like things that you're doing. Why don't you just do them here and do Reiki while you're also doing the other things? And I was like, there we go. So I literally, this is where I'm saying being thrown. So it's like, I learned Reiki on like a Saturday. And then it was like, I started to teach like less than a week after like, and, and host my own Reiki circles. Um, and then, you know, I decided to become a Reiki master, but it was like, they were so intermixed. Um, but yeah, it's like the only thing that I've ever been like told to do. <laughs> or not told, but lovingly shared to do that I followed. And, um, I don't know what the hell I would be doing without Reiki in my life. Mm -hmm. Now. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I, you are incredible Reiki master and you were definitely, that's why I kept coming back to you. Cause when I was going to the, to that place, uh, locally that had pretty much daily Reiki circles, which is awesome. Cause you can kind of go at the best days that work for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they are daily anymore, but we're living, yeah, crazy we are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're living a crazy time back then i was very grateful mm -hmm. uh, and i of course i tried everybody and you were definitely top <laughs> for me i know that i wasn't the top though i know who your top was and that's fine it's cool <laughs> i know janet we loved her oh that's right we loved janet yeah, yeah. <laughs> we loved janet it wasn't so yeah i kind of loved everyone in different ways everyone has their own um thing but at that time yeah and you were definitely top like top two for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, now I know you to be a channeler uh, of animals and your, your channel, your channel gift has shifted and grown and definitely expanded. Yeah. Talk me through how the animals started coming to you. That was like so insane. And I want to also just say that like that Ikaru here does Reiki. So like if anybody wants some Reiki I love been certified with you, yes. Huh? <laughs> I have been certified with you. Yes. I, I can't wait to like actually teach you how to be a Reiki master. Oh yeah. I'm not level three yet, but I want to be. Wait, no, you will be because I'm going to, I'm going to create the, the, the program. I'm going to teach you and I'm going to like cry uh, I'm teaching you in the, in a beautiful way of like, you know, cause it's like, I think about this, like, I just want to state this. So it's like, like, like anybody when I'm not available or whatever for like Reiki and they're like, well, who do you recommend? I'm like, Ikru, Ikru, Ikru. Like, I just want to state that because we all know you as a card reader and all these amazing things, but your Reiki is also divine. Too. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Quite beautiful. Yeah, I don't get to practice it enough. Um, no, no. Listen, you I, can practice I enjoy it. Doing it. I'm here there for you. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, okay. So now I even got lo lost the question of, um, oh, like oh, with the, okay. The animals. Yeah. So yeah. it's really interesting because, so what happens is when you receive an attunement, which yeah. I think I gave you a headache for like days, which is hilarious. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're right. I did have some a headache. Yeah, wait, wait, hold on. So, wait, so I'll just didn't talk about what an attunement is. <laughs> and I just want to hear your experience. So like an attunement is a rite of passage, right? Where basically you're receiving your Reiki masters and the lineage that they are connected to intuitive gifts. That's why it is so important. And it's also just such an honor for me to attune anybody because it is this rite of passage. And so my particular Reiki master, she like was connected to the animal kingdom, not where they were her main animal or her main, you know, spirit guides, like they are with me, but she always had a connection. So when you would receive an attunement, like the first time, at least there was an animal that came through, um, and then the animal kingdom started to like work with me, which I'll, I'll share that process. But 
Um, I want to hear it really quickly because I gave you an attunement and then you had a headache. I just want to like state this. <laughs> Calling it out. The, I think that was the only time I kind of really had a physical reaction. Um, Cause yeah, I think, well, I'm not sure it was the next day or two days later. I was like, I have a headache and it wasn't like a terrible one. 30 plus people that I've certified, like 50 right. people even at level one. You were the only one that was like, I have a headache. You're like, what did you <laughs> I think it lasted like three days and it wasn't terrible where I couldn't get up or something, but it was just this nagging little feeling that I'm like, Oh my God, I don't want to, you know, and, and to me, I'm a, I think I have a pretty good tolerance for pain. Yeah. Uh, you have a beautiful tattoo. It's like, thank you. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> But when it comes to headaches, I think that's the worst pain. I mean, I say this as a man, right, who <laughs> does not bleed every month. So I have no, <laughs> I have no place in saying that, oh, my God, it was so painful. <laughs> um, but I don't know. To me, I'm a baby when it comes to headaches. I hate them. So I was like, oh, God. This maybe, is maybe, maybe, though, this is just an indication of how I leave you feeling in your life. <laughs> your headache in my, in my life. Yes. <laughs> I bring you the most annoying suffering <laughs> <of> pain. <laughs> no, but I've, I don't, I'm not sure if that was from level one or from level two. It was level two. It was level, it was two, level two. Okay. So I yeah, guess yeah. it really was leveling up. Yeah. You were leveling up and obviously <laughs> I, was, I make you feel like this, but yeah. So like basically what happened is, is that I start to do Reiki and I kind of had, you know, an indication that obviously my Reiki master, that some of her intuitive skills was to connect to the animals. So automatically you're receiving that. Right. Um, and I would do Reiki and it was like, after like six months, I kept seeing all these different animals and I was like, Whoa. And then I would tell people, I'm like, you know, look up the meaning of this animal. I'm like, I'm not quite sure. Like I literally was like, I'm not quite sure to now I'm like, we're vibing out. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I remember being like, why are the animals coming to me and having this like really intense, like, like why, you know, like kind of journey. Mm -hmm. Um, and my sister as brilliant as she was, I remember we were in the hospital. She was like there cause she wasn't feeling well. And, um, she was like, I was like, I just don't know why these animals are coming to me. And I bought like every animal book, every animal deck. I was like, I'm into it, whatever. And I still couldn't find anything that like resonated as like why you start channeling animals. And then she was like, why don't you just like, let go and just not ask why and just accept. And I was like, she was so much more like spiritually ahead than even anybody I know. <laughs> and I was like, oh, God, that's fine. Right, right. <laughs> and God damn it. You're like, God, that's right. And you're like, damn it, you know? Um, and so I then was like in my meditation practice one day and I literally started to morph and become one with Noah's Ark. Oh, wow. And I was really freaked out. I did not grow up spiritual. I mean, religious. So I grew up more spiritual. So I didn't, I just was like, oh, this is a religious thing. What's happening? Like, I kind of went through all these different emotions. Um, I started like researching like Noah's Ark. And then I just was like, you know what? This isn't helping me to like actually do a lot of research. I'm going to just ask him directly. Mm -hmm. And so for about, uh, so what I found is that I actually helped to gather the animals onto the Ark. And then I actually was also a part of it afterwards where I helped to rehabilitate the animals after the journey of being on the ark. And so basically when I was going through the most challenging time, I would channel with Noah's ark and, uh, he would present a different animal every, uh, time I would meditate. And he would ask me how I felt about this animal. When I saw it, what did it mean to me? What did it resonate with me? Um, and I would have a conversation with him and it was actually like interesting because I haven't connected him, connected with him for a while, but he really was my main guide. And so were these animals when my sister was going through her three years of diagnosis. So I worked very extensively with them. Um, and now we have our own relationship and I work with them separately from him. Um, and it's been quite a journey. Yeah. Wow. Well, I know I have to my Welcome to my will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now you have your own animal deck. Yeah. So, and because what happened is, is then it expanded where um, every time I meditate, there's a different animal that comes through. And so what happened is, is that they would start to come through and I would be, I always end my uh, meditations with Reiki energy healing for myself. And so there would be a different animal that would come through and I would just start to assess my chakras and where I would want to send Reiki to myself. And I would notice that whatever animal was coming through would help to guide me to land on a specific chakra. 
And then I decided to ask questions of why they wanted to work within that energy um, and get a lot of different guidance and feedback. And then I would research it and it would always align. So wow, that's wow. where like the animals and I have a very uh, sacred, very specific and very unique relationship in the sense of that I've never been able to really truly find how these animals create, like, you know, have this connection through the chakra system, but they have allowed me to work with them in that space. And that's where this deck is an honor to them to share how they want to be seen from my lens of intuition that I have the highest intention in space will help to serve others. That's incredible. Yeah. Your deck is a really good one. Thank you. Uh, I'm excited to, to work with it. Um, so now talk me through how you became a crystal shop. Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, really what happened is, is that my sister during her, um, chemo, mm-hmm. I was on this like spiritual journey and quest. And I started to get these crystals that I would get from, you know, where we were, you know, working at the time. And I would create these little altars and these little different crystal intention grids. Mm-hmm. And I had already been exposed to crystals. I mean, my dad had a thousand pound rock amethyst, like we always, but the, he really liked them because of how beautiful they were. And he did like their properties. Like he would say, Oh, this is really good for soothing, but it wasn't like he was necessarily getting them because of that. He just really loved how stunning they were. So I had always grown up with crystals. And then what happened is, is that I started to use them in this really intentional way with healing. And I became obsessed. And I noticed that if I wasn't wearing a crystal, I would feel completely different. Um, And so really it's an honor for me to sell crystals. I I never thought that I would be able to afford becoming a crystal shop because it is quite an investment. So when I was able to, you know, have the money to invest in it, I was really scared to be honest with you because I didn't want to just sell crystals to sell crystals because I think that crystals are so popular and they're so wonderful, but I didn't want to just sell them to sell them. I wanted to sell them with intention because of how much they mean to me in my life and the healing that they've brought in. So for me, I was really scared to become a crystal shop because I never wanted to come across as that energy. Um, And so I really started to realize that if I could just share the properties and how people could use them and make that accessible, that that was really what worked for me. And so the crystal shop, I think is still growing and expanding into, and I think I'm finally, I I feel very, I feel very unconfident to be honest with you, my crystal knowledge, I became a crystal. Yeah. I became a crystal certified healer and it was a good course, but I can't say that it was like you know, I think I've talked to other people who really know crystals and they can like tell you like the chemical constructions and like all the science behind it. And I don't have that knowledge. And so I've done a lot of like comparison and feeling like really, um, really less than in my crystal knowledge. Um, but what I've decided to shift and lean into is that I know these crystals and how they've helped me and my journey and healing. And I believe in them. And I love them and I have to have them in my life. I don't have to, but like I I have them in my life because of how much healing they've brought to me and to others. Um, And so if I can just lean into that space, that's going to make me the most authentic crystal shop out there, you know, for myself, that's not comparing, but um, becoming a crystal shop is a journey. You know, there's so many ones out there and um, yeah, I just, I, I, I'm still discovering that journey but I'm starting to finally own what it means for me. You know, hearing you talk about that and taking that leap into a crystal shop and you've taken the leap into entrepreneurial, spiritual um, business, taking the leap into away from being an actress, right? Sounds like you've taken a lot of leaps, (laughs) you know, the leap away from corporate world and all that. What, do you, do you attribute this faith, I guess, to take the leap to anything or to anyone? My mom. Really? My, yeah. My mom has always believed in me and has always instilled this in me um, since I can remember. She was always like, whatever you end up doing, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I really... I really attribute her to instilling this, this characteristic inside of me. I love that. 
Yeah. She'll love that part too. I'll be like, mom, I finally shot you out. Cause she's always like, she's like, what about me? (laughs) (laughs) She has that tendency as well. (laughs) So I have some final questions for you. You kind of already answered this one. Um, What does your spiritual path mean to you? Everything. (laughs) Literally, I don't know if I would be able to be here without it. Like it literally is everything. This is the thing is like, there's no disconnection between myself and my spiritual path. They are literally one. Um, And I own that fully because I remember being in my corporate job and I was working for this really spiritual company and people are like, you're so the brand because it was in cosmetics. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I'm not, I'm this person. Whereas in this thing, there's no disconnect. You're like, I am my own brand. (laughs) I really am. I really am. And I think that like, I don't know if that's going to not be great <laughs> going forward. And maybe I'll start to disconnect. I think that we, you know, can definitely shift and have different purposes. So it's like, not to say like, whatever, but like, you know, that, that might be scary <laughs> and that might not be the correct or right answer, but at least it's my answer for right now. <laughs> that's all I got. That's all I want. <laughs> so what's something that people get wrong about you? Oh God. Um, Ooh, that I can be, that I can be bitchy. <laughs> I, you know what? I actually don't, don't know that about you. I feel like maybe that like people like, it's not that people like don't doubt that in me, but like, I think that, um, when I like, I think I'm, I'm wanting people to not get that wrong about me. <laughs> That's what it is. I want people to, I think that for me, I've really like, am so out of alignment with like people pleasing and always being kind. And you know, this, I literally called you earlier, like, or last week to say to you, like, was I being okay? Was I being, and you were like, no, you were being perhaps like bitchy or direct, but like you needed to be, or like whatever. And I, I say this because I feel like, um, I think that when it happens, I don't expect it within myself and other people don't expect it, but like, I'm really learning. I don't think that bitchy is a bad thing. Nope. I think that I'm learning, uh, that like what people get wrong about me is that like, I don't have boundaries. Like I don't like not have like, yeah, like that, that's what it is, is that I think that because I'm so like loving and caring that people just assume that I don't have boundaries. And so I'm learning how to establish them in a healthy way. Um, and in a, not in an unkind way, but I, 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 yeah, that's what it comes down to. I feel like, like, I feel like I could be wrong, but would that be something that like is a good, like not a good answer, but there's um, a good or wrong answer. That's your answer. And that's what I'm looking see, for. But see, but see how I even in this answer I have a hard it. time answering it yes. because I am getting it wrong even within myself still. <laughs> even in that language, you said getting it wrong within yourself. What does that mean to get it wrong? Right. And when you, when you asked me about that situation, you were pushed into a corner. Right. Right. And any, going back to who you channel and what you channel, any animal will push to a corner will come out swinging yeah because yeah. they get scared they're like i'm being I'm, I'm gonna book back away back away back away until i cannot back away anymore now i'm gonna attack right and bitches get shit done so when you came to me being like oh, was i bitchy i was like no you were assertive because if you were a man you wouldn't think that way right but, but because we live in this fucking patriarchal society Women need to be kind and nurturing and loving and caring. Mm -hmm. So when you are assertive and setting your boundaries that are, it's a very healthy thing to do, especially those of us too, that are in this wellness world, we give ourselves so much and we listen to all these very deep um, confessionals a lot of the time. Yes. Yes. People would not say to other people and we taking those things, absorbing them. If I want to continue being a loving, caring person, I need to set boundaries. So true. Otherwise, I'm going to be exhausted, bitter, and angry. (laughs) Well, and you know what's so funny is that you say that, and it's almost like, or even to get to the next level of life and what you're trying to create, you can't not have boundaries and then get to like that next level. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to a friend of mine, and she works for this guy who used to be I'm forgetting exactly his title, but he worked with like the Rolling Stones. He worked with like big bands and big names. And he was kind of like a stage manager kind of thing. 
Yeah. And she described him uh, and he, the way he dresses is like a, a blue button down with like cargo shorts, not even pants, cargo shorts and like not flip flops, just like sneakers, you know, yeah. you would never look at this guy and think, holy shit, you've worked with like big business, right. And big um, label companies. So there was this one lady who she would come up and be like, oh my God, I would love to put you in like this outfit. Or like he went into this um, meeting, a company meeting, and they were offended that he was not wearing a suit. Oh my gosh. And his response is, do not mistake me for somebody who needs you and needs your money. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. Wait, wait, hold on. Let's manifest that one day we can say that to people. I'm already saying that now. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know what? I You're right. My friend. Yes, You're I right. turned to my friend and I was like, I am taking that quote and using it for myself. Do not mistake me for somebody who needs you. Like, <gasps> I want you in my life and I welcome you in my life. Yes. But if you cross a line, if you push me to a corner and you keep pushing me, I don't mistake me for somebody. And I was just like, that's brilliant. And it sets very clear boundaries. Yes. And also I feel like it tells the universe this is who I am and this is who I want to be and where I want to get to. And there's so much snaps in this. I'm so, so sorry. Many snaps. I know because, okay, <laughs> he's walking to a business meeting with all these suits. Right. Just because he's right. Not wearing, it also talks about our own judgment of like, just because he's not wearing a suit or looks a certain way, right. suddenly he's stupid. He's poor. He's an idiot. Or he's so, showing up unprofessional, right? Showing up unprofessional. And right. Like, First of all, what is unprofessional to begin with? Exactly. I'm in shirts right now. You are in a beautiful flowing, like. Whatever. Yeah. Top. I told you I'm taking off my bra for this episode. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I love that. You know? Yeah. So when she said that to me, I was like, that is my new life motto. Mm. You know, of don't mistake me for something that I'm, it's not even like to that, that I need your money. Don't mistake me for something I'm not. Exactly. And I think it's also like, don't mistake me for somebody that needs something from you. Yes. Because yes. I feel like even like for me, I don't know if you've ever felt like this, but like being like intimidated, right. Of like, Oh, like, like I got hired for this like event or this thing. And it's like these, like whatever. And it's like, Oh my God. It's like, it's like, no, like I'm equally there too. Even if I'm not there in a monetary way of like whatever, but like I'm there in an equal energy exchange way. So I love that. That was brilliant. Yes. So good. So I, know, good. I love that. It puts the power back on us. Yes. You and know, it also yeah. lets us not leak our power. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, I, I remember being grateful when I first got hired at the design agency and I was like, Oh my God, they're taking a chance on me. I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And they were taking a chance on me. I was fresh out of college. I didn't, you know, I didn't have that much experience, but at the same time, they're the ones that are hiring. Right. They're the ones that need me. You right. know, I can continue looking for a job. They only have that one position. So I'm so like, Oh my God, thank you so much. I'm so humbled and grateful. And it's like, you should also be grateful that you have me. These it's back and like, forth of gratitude. I feel like these uh, podcasts that we're on are going to be like 90 minute episodes. Cause I do oh, best to be like, I do manifest <laughs> recurring guests, but you're bringing something else into what's happening in society right now, which is brilliant. And I want to just share this is I think you saw, saw a lot of shift in COVID right? Where like people were like desperate for like work. They got out of work. Right. And then now you're seeing where like, people are like, I don't want to show up to this job and be treated like this, mm -hmm. make this amount of money because there's so many people right now that, you know, are hiring that it's like, I can just go there and be treated really well. And so like what you're kind of even talking about on a deeper level is like, where we don't have to give away our power, where we can actually really feel powerful in situations that most align with us. Yeah. I'm just a believer that everyone deserves some level of respect. Exactly. Until you cross a line or until you continue disrespecting me, then we'll, I'm going to probably shift my tone. Right. But in the beginning, I think everyone deserves some respect and everyone has a story. Right. So when, you know, walking into a, a job, walking to a business, or even now us as entrepreneurs, and I'm, I'm talking to people or hiring people and partnering with people for different workshops. I'm giving you the respect that you deserve. Right. Until I realize that mm, 
you're not that person and that's okay. Yeah. No judgment there, but I'm going to analyze. I'm not going to judge because you're still a person that deserves to be humanized, but I'm going to analyze and go based in my analysis. Right. We don't really vibe right. together and that's okay. I wish you all the love in the world. Thanks so much. <laughs> you know what? And I think that that's the thing too, is going back to your question that we've just like now taken like 20 minutes of a turn, which is fantastic. But I, I think it. that, um, what people get wrong is that knowing that people who are in the spiritual world have the best intentions. That's because, actually, yeah. What's something that people get wrong about yeah. the spiritual I mean, world is the that. spiritual world is that because unfortunately I've had experiences and I know you have too with working with people that are in this, like spiritual realm that use words like community abundance and love and support that have no um intention of actually falling through on that or really are using it as marketing ploys yes because it's it's like pride month right every Mm -hmm. pride month suddenly everyone is gay friendly yep like every every, business is every business loves the gays yep and then you realize during the other months that they're giving away to charities or sorry, not charities, but organizations that are anti LGBT. Yes. Right. So it's kind of like the same thing of, Oh, wellness and meditation and yeah. self-love yeah. are these big words that are just trending right now. Yep. Suddenly all these businesses are like, Oh my God, self-love we're selling self-love. And you turn around and you go a little bit deeper under the surface and they have no intention. It, it's very much about self-serving versus self-love towards other, you know, towards themselves and other people. You know, and that, and that is, um, I think that that is so important to really kind of know that when we are really truly aligned with a purpose or a cause that we are doing the research to really know that that is the best alignment, uh, like to keep investing in as well. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And it it goes back to my question to you of like, what does it mean to do the work? Right. And and I think continuing what it means to do the work is continuing to be, I, I have, I have to sell my values and I have to live my values. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have to, yeah, I just, that's, that's what it is. I, I'm doing the yeah. work because I continue to be my values. I cannot lie, mm-hmm. quote unquote, and continue perp- like perpetuating that lie. Yes. I'm eventually going to lie on myself and I'm going to reveal yep. the whole thing and yep. reveal that I'm suddenly a charlatan and I'm wearing a mask. Yep. That is brilliant too, because there was actually really quickly, like when I was actually at my last um, retreat with David G, he talked about this because every time we kind of connect, he kind of re-establishes what my values are because your values can shift and change. You know, your values of like where you were even like a year ago can shift to now. And so he was like talking to like this, like, you know, really successful, you know, entrepreneur and like one of their values was like freedom where they can basically get up and they can like go on their plane. They can travel, they can do whatever. And, uh, one of David G's values is community. And he was like, Oh man, he's like, I really value freedom. I would love to do that. I would love to like be able to just like, be like, Oh, I'm going to go travel, whatever. And then he's like, all right, then let's do it. And then David G was like, I can't, I have this thing tomorrow that I have to do. And so he realized in that moment that his value is community and that he's going to value that perhaps more than this particular individual is valuing freedom. Yeah. That's where like, when you can get so clear on what your values are, it's not just to be like, I value respect and love and like saying these things, but actually being a living example and activating them. Because when you activate them, other people that come into your life are able to receive that value as well. What I see a lot in the spiritual community is these words that get thrown around, like freedom, respect, self-love, ascend, ascension. Ascension is a great one. Is a great one. But yet I kind of, I hear it in their voice. This yeah. unspoken thing of, you have no idea what you're saying. Right. You're regurgitating it from a teacher. Like, I mean, I'm glad that they're listening to these teachers like Gabby Bernstein or David G or Deepak Chopra or Oprah even, or any of these other teachers that are out there, but they have not stopped 
to define those words for themselves exactly. and what it means to live those words. Yeah. That I'm just like, okay. I hope because, that on your path, you're going to yeah. discover that. But right now you're not there yet. <laughs> because the thing is, is that you can't just take somebody else's teachings and then just like have that be your teachings. It's like, how does that actually integrate into you? And how does that make sense to you? Yeah. It's yeah. It's constant work of like aligning yourself to what you're teaching, preaching and living. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So my next question to you is what's a memory that always makes you smile? A memory of oh, kissing Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> you want to tell that story? I mean, I'll just on like, a record. <laughs> I'll just share it like briefly, but like I got to meet Leonardo DiCaprio and he was my first kiss and I was 11. And I'll just like, because I feel like that should just be like another podcast episode because that would be okay. funny. about the art of manifesting. That's what we'll like call it. <laughs> there it, there it. <laughs> you call it whatever you want, but it'll be something about like whatever it is. I like that title. Yeah. Right. I don't know. That just came through. Uh, but I, I feel like, um, yeah. Cause it wasn't just about kissing Leonardo DiCaprio. Although like, like low key, uh, uh, our dear friend, Geraldine, she sent me like a, a reel of Leonardo DiCaprio. And like, look at me, I'm like touching my neck and stuff. I'm like getting so like, so nervous. And I was like, I, was, like, I just love him so much. Um, so every time, I don't know if I, I see it. I feel like it goes beyond smiling, <laughs> I'm smiling in my whole entire body. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. So I have my other question here is like, you know, have you ever had a, t- a tarot reading, which of course you have, but you have many decks with yeah, you. Yeah. Is there like a card that you pull or maybe an animal that you see? And every time you see it or you pull that card, you go, yes. Um, you know, what's so funny is it's the queen of pentacles for the tarot deck. I don't pull it, but whenever you have pulled it for me because it's come through a lot. It has it, for you. I get that a lot. Um, and, and it's, and it's, I, so I have to just say that every time I see it, I'm like, excuse my French, but I'm, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Cause we've been cursing. I'm like, bitch, I got this. Like, I'm like, I got like, I just feel like every time you pull that card for me, it's like, like, where have you forgotten that you're the queen? Okay. Where have you forgotten that you are like the maker of abundance in the most intentional way? Because I don't even know if you, if you have that card around you, but something about the facial expression in that card of like, it just hits me differently. It's like, it's just my favorite card. I really love it. I really do. So what is a book movie quote song, um, that you just love it so much. You want to share with everybody. What's coming through right now is like not even like one that like <laughs> I would ever say that I would ever think of, but it's just coming through some trusting spirit. I got soul, but I'm not a soldier. From uh killers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know why that's coming through. I think because I think that like when we're in this journey of spirituality and discovering, it can be really hard. Mm-hmm. And I think about like that we don't have to force our way through it that we can just know that our soul and our existence is enough. Yeah. We've got soul, but not a soldier. We don't have to fight for our soul. We can just let ourselves be in that, that space. I love that. I love that line. I'm forgetting what song song is called. Like, why did that just, you know what I mean? Like I literally, (laughs) like there's so many other things I would, would have said, but that's what came through. Yeah. I'm forgetting what the title of the song, but I know it's from, it's by the killers. And I love that song. So finally, all all these things that I've done, that's what it's called. All these things that I've done. That song I've done. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then finally, how can people connect with you? Um, You can connect with me, obviously through Instagram is definitely the best uh, bet, or you can connect with me at www.justbeinspired. Otherwise. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like, um, I'm just so glad you're doing this. Thank you're you. like the most entertaining person and you <laughs> ask such beautiful like questions that I can't imagine all these amazing interviews. And I'll probably like listen back to this one and be like, oh my God. But um, I hope to be back here again and uh, maybe share the Leo story or just have some fun. Well, I'm sure that now that you've teased it, people are going to be like, well, you cannot drop this carrot in front of me and not let me eat it. 
I feel like Ikaru, I feel like there's an opportunity to maybe have a podcast. And like, this is like totally like where I'm of course overstepping my boundaries and like, like giving you what <laughs> you do. But like, I feel like I, I feel like there might be an opportunity to really like talk about becoming a spiritual entrepreneur, like different ways that people can do it. Cause I just feel like, I mean, I, I, I sense that like, when I call you, like you're one of the few people that I feel like understand what the F I'm going through. Mm. Thanks. And so I feel like this podcast, I could be wrong, but, um, I feel like this podcast has like been in the works for a long time of brewing for you. And now it's like being an entrepreneur saying, this is when it's ready to come to surface. I have been thinking about this for years mm -hmm. and I think I interviewed you also a few years ago. Yeah, I, I kind of had like a thought and I was going to go through with it, but the idea needed to mature. I needed to mature for sure. <laughs> uh, and now it feels like I've matured enough. I have a point of view and I have things I want to talk about. And also a blessed, like talk about, you talked about community a, a little while ago and I've been blessed to be in your community and to have built a community of my own of people that have incredible stories and have a unique perspective and something to teach um, that I selfishly, this podcast is a very selfish move because I want to hear it. I want to learn. I want to absorb. Anyone that's listening, I'm glad that you're listening and I'm so happy you're here. But selfishly, I want to listen to these people and their stories and what they have to say and what they have to teach. Um, and yeah, that's my point of view for this. And I, I think I've matured enough where I can ask, you know, I talked a little bit earlier to, with you about like how I, I do get nervous about asking the right questions and the deep questions. And I, I want to have a difficult conversations and talk about difficulties because you as a woman, as an entrepreneur, I'm sure you deal with your own set of issues being a woman and then your own set of issues being young and your own set of issues being a channeler and a Reiki master, like there's all these different facets that bring their own challenges, but also bring their own triumphs. Mm. And I want to share that with people. I'm like crying because I'm just like so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I just love you. I love you too. Thank you for having me here. Like, honestly, thank you so much. Love you, babe. Thank you for being here. I love you. And there you have it. That's our conversation with Jess being inspired. And I think that's the perfect name for her, Jess being inspired. She is incredibly inspiring with her story. She continues to inspire me in her friendship, in what she does, in her resilience, her courage, and just how she moves forward. And I hope she was able to touch your heart and inspire you as well. So if you guys want to connect more with Jess, all the links are in the show description. And if you guys want to connect with me, my links are also in the show description. Please come and join the Rainbow Temple on my Patreon page. It is a really good time over there. You get more videos, you get um, harder looks into the energies that are going on in the cosmos. We look at the month ahead. I pull cards, even though this show is called The Tarotist. I'm definitely a tarot reader more in the Rainbow Temple Patreon. And really, it's this beautiful community that we're trying to build. Also, you guys can find me on YouTube as Icaro Tarot. And you can find me on Instagram also as Icaro Tarot, one word. Thank you all so much for listening. Stay funky out there. And I'll see you guys next week.